Hi fire signs and welcome back to my channel. Welcome if this is your first time here. So I'm doing your love and spirituality reading for Aries, Leo, Sagittarius and this can apply to your sun, moon, rising or Venus sign and I'll also be doing an extended video so I'll leave the link to that in the description box down below. All right, let's jump into it. Um, I already pulled cards for you just to save time. So the first card that came out is the transformation card clarified by the great fortune card. So with the transformation card being here in reverse, what I'm getting is that a lot of you have been in this period of your life where you are trying to elevate, you're trying to level up. Um, some of you are really wanting to, um, what's the word I'm hearing, reinvent yourself. Like you're wanting to recreate yourself after a very difficult cycle, which makes perfect sense because we are entering, or we have already entered, I should say, Scorpio season. So Scorpio energy is all about um, death and rebirth, not literal death, but it's like the death process that takes place um, when we complete a very difficult cycle in our lives and we need to kind of shed our skin and um, become a better version of ourselves in order to step into a new cycle. So some of you are doing that or you're being advised to do that. Like if you feel like you are just in a rut and you have no clue what to do next and you feel kind of lost, it looks like you're it looks like you're being advised to recreate yourself because what's happening is that you have stepped into this new energy but you're trying to show up in this new energy as the past version of yourself so it's it's like conflicting you have to show up in this new stage in your life as um the present or the yeah i guess that yeah the present version of yourself or the the better version of yourself in order for you to feel at peace I, like you'll always feel this inner conflict when you're in a completely new stage in your life and you're trying to repeat old habits okay so for example let's just say that maybe in the past um you were very drawn towards toxic relationships right it's like you've learned so much through going through those situations that when it's time for you to now step into a more healthy relationship it's like you can't show up doing the same things that you were doing in those past relationships because it's a whole new energy now you see so it's like you have to um kind of elevate and step into this new version of yourself in order for you to feel comfortable in this new cycle that you're about to enter so with the great fortune card coming up underneath it, um, it's very clear that some of you are about to enter a very prosperous cycle. Um, a lot of you who have been putting in hard work, it's definitely going to pay off very soon, um, even if you don't see it. And I feel like the only thing that could possibly hinder you, like I said, is you not um, taking on this, this new role. Um, using the wisdom that you've obtained and growing and refusing to stay stagnant and stuck. It's like, as long as you are cooperating with the universe and letting past things go, um, letting that past version of yourself go, then it's like you can't lose. A lot of great fortune is definitely going to come your way. So with the morality card being here, along with the community card, um, I believe the earth signs got the community card as well. So you could have earth in your chart or you could have possibly been dealing with someone who's an earth sign. But um, with community being in the upright, that's a good thing. Um, so in the upcoming month, a lot of you could be meeting like your soul tribe or you could be meeting people who you feel just genuinely understand you. Um, with the morality card being here, I'm just seeing a lot of balance that's coming in and a lot of karmic justice as well. So if you... If you were in a cycle that you felt was unfair in some way, it looks like that's going to be that's going to be balanced out. For some of you, what I'm hearing is that the reason that you're having a hard time transforming is because of the injustice. So if you were in a cycle where you felt like you were unfairly treated, sometimes that can actually keep your energy stuck in that cycle because you just want to see that person or situation get the karma that they deserve. It feels very unfair for you to kind of let it go because it's like you're feeling like letting it go means that the person gets away with what they've done. You see what I'm saying? It's like sometimes we feel like if we let our hurt go and just say, you know what, I'm just going to let it go. We almost feel like it's diminishing our feelings or we almost feel like if we let it go too soon, then it's like we'll never get to see that person pay for what they did or that person won't realize how much they hurt me if I just decide to let it go. But nine times out of 10, people who hurt you on that level or to that extent, they should be able to feel remorse without even seeing you suffer at all. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes when we're dealing with people who could be a little closed off or cold, 
we'll just think to ourselves, you know, if I self-destruct, then they'll see how badly they've hurt me. Like, even if you don't consciously know that you're doing this, like a lot of us do this subconsciously, it's like, if I self-destruct, then they'll see like how much of an impact or how much damage they've done. But like I said, nine times out of 10, if they are an empathic person, you wouldn't need to do that for them to realize the error in their ways and for them to try to make it right. If there's someone who's very cold and they're willing to hurt you and you have to go through those drastic measures just to get them to see how much they've hurt you, it's, it's just kind of not worth it is what I'm hearing. Like those types of people, it's just, it's really not worth it. Um, if they don't have the ability to have empathy unless they see someone like in the gutter, like bleeding, then it's like, why would you even want them in your life? Because what's going to happen is every time they hurt you, you're going to have to exaggerate your pain in order to get them to pay attention to you. It's kind of like those kids who their parents are really closed off and cold. So they can never just say, oh, my stomach hurts. Cause then their parents will be like, you know what, get out of my face. Like that's not, if it's not any, if you're not bleeding or dying, I don't want to hear it. Like invalidating their children's pain, right? So what the child will do is start to exaggerate their pain just so that the, the parent can take them seriously. So the child might come in the room and say, oh, I, I threw up and you know, and maybe they actually didn't, but they know that if they say something minor, they're going to be ignored. So they have to exaggerate and, and that's i feel like that's the type of person or people you've been dealing with where you have to kind of exaggerate your pain or not even exaggerate it but you have to like just put it on display for them to even remotely see what they've done to you and even then they still kind of don't see it so these are the type of people like i said who you can't take them personally they're very disconnected from their own heart space and that's why they are the way that they are it's much better to invest in connections with people who can feel your pain and who are em empathic and who can sympathize with you without you having to fall apart or fall to pieces, you know? And when they hurt you, they'll immediately make it right without you having to, you know, self-destruct in order for them to do so. So I'm excited for a lot of you because you're meeting, like I said, you're meeting these types of people, you're meeting your soul tribe, you're connecting with them. And it looks like you're not gonna have to worry about um, being hurt again and not getting that closure and not getting um, and not seeing the justice play out in your favor but trust and believe the universe is always on time so if you were in an unjust or unfair cycle it it's definitely going to be balanced out so no worries like your only job is to let go and move forward and, and trust that the universe is going to do its job um, with the control card being here in the reverse along with the concern card in the reverse um, the control card talks about basically letting go of the reins a little bit um, some of you you do take a very controlling approach when it comes to life which rightfully so I mean with the way that people behave and like how selfish people can be and how hurtful people can be it would make sense for you to take this approach to life because you kind of want to control like who comes into your life you want to control what happens next because it's a way to protect you because people are so people are just really unpredictable <laughs> like they're really unpredictable like one minute you think that they're one way the next minute they're not um the betrayal the deceit the backstabbing you know human traits um so it makes perfect sense why control is something that is important to you because it helps you to regulate your emotions and it helps you to not experience like catastrophic pain and in very intense emotional situations some of you are just very sensitive like you're more sensitive than the average person so control is your way of just making sure that you know things work out in your favor okay so with the control card being here in the reverse you might have been put in a situation where you feel like you're out of control and that's the only issue with living your life in a very controlled way and i'm like i'm like this too like i do this um i like to be in control of everything but the only problem is that when something happens that's out of our control it feels like a much bigger deal because we're so used to being in control all the time so someone else who kind of goes with the flow and doesn't try to control anything it's like they handle certain situations unexpected situations being thrown at them so much easier than those of us who feel the need to be in control so for some of you you may have experienced something where it's not in your hands or it's not in your control and um i think that what that was meant to teach you is that sometimes things are not going to be in your control so why put yourself through the stress of constantly worrying and being hyper vigilant and trying to think ahead if that makes any sense and it's easier said than done because like i said it is a defense mechanism that we develop in order to keep ourselves safe so it's easy to say you know oh you can't guess what's going to happen next just relax but 
some of you, that's exactly the advice that's being given because sometimes being in control or trying to be in control can actually cause us to sabotage our own happiness or our own lives because we want to be able to predict what's going to happen next. And if we don't, sometimes we can just initiate an ending just off the strength, just off the strength that we don't know what's going to happen next. So we want to be in control of what happened next, what happens next. So we just end things or we just walk away or we just sabotage a really good opportunity. So basically, I think that this is teaching you um, how to trust in a higher power, how to trust in the universe. Like, yes, you have to protect yourself, but at the same time you have to know when to let go of control and to not think so far ahead to the point where you start jumping to worst case scenarios and then sabotaging your own happiness is what i'm seeing and also living life from that standpoint of always wanting to be in control is stressful like it causes a lot of tension in your body because you're always just looking out for danger, looking out for like what's going to happen next. And again, that isn't your fault. Obviously, this is def a defense mechanism. So, you know, it's like can't really blame you. Um, but yeah, I think that that's going to be a spiritual challenge or a spiritual mission for you, learning how to, un to overcome those feelings of just wanting to be in control is what I'm seeing. And also the good news is that whatever the situation was where you fell out of control, it's falling away from you in the upcoming weeks, meaning that you're healing from it, you're recovering from it, you're not gonna be thinking about it that much. Um, because when you experience something that's not in your control, it can stick with you for a very long time because you can be analyzing it like, okay, what went wrong there? Like, let me analyze the details of this so that I never have to repeat this experience again. And again, that's a defense mechanism to keep you safe. Um, so some of you could be in that energy of just analyzing a past situation to death because you're trying to figure out what went wrong and how you can fix it or how you can avoid it next time and that in itself can be very uh kind of stressful but in the upcoming weeks that's falling away from you your concern your anxiety and your worry are um, going to be lessening in the upcoming weeks i'm trying to see if there's anything else or any other messages here i'm getting that there's um it's an interesting message i'm getting that there's a need for you to balance soft and hard um Oh God, that didn't sound right. Okay. <laughs> what I'm getting is that your environment, you may need to add some soft touches to it, some feminine touches to it. Because I'm seeing, I, I think this is for a very small group of you, but I'm seeing like some of you, your room or your house isn't necessarily decorated. It could have like the bare minimum in it. So you could have like a bed, you know, a headboard, a dresser things of that sort, but you may need to add some feminine touches like a, a painting or like some flowers or something like that. Um, interesting because a message like that came up in the in the earth signs too, needing to add feminine touches to the environment. Um, I think that honestly, that's because of Scorpio season because Scorpio season can be quite a heavy energy. Like it can carry a lot of heavy energy. And so sometimes like feminine touches or, or like soft, delicate touches in your home can help to kind of alleviate some of that um, heavy energy that comes with Scorpio season is what I'm seeing. All right. So let's pull for, um, your outside energy and for those of you who are new the outside energy is basically the energy of a person or a situation that is impacting you the most and we pull for outside energy because um it's rare that we learn lessons um on our own usually we learn lessons through interacting with people in our outside environment so let me pull for that Okay, so I pulled for your outside energy. So what came up on your end is the guidance card in reverse, sudden wealth, and the gift card. And then on their end, they got postponement, the courthouse, and the thief card. Okay, interesting. So with you coming up as the guidance card in reverse, um, this lets me know that whatever this outside energy is, it's something that you're having a hard time figuring out. Um, you just feel very misguided, like you're being misled in some way, or you're seeking out guidance, but it's hard for you to um, determine if you can trust the guidance that you're seeking. So some of you could be seeking out like intuitive guidance, meaning that you are trying to listen to your intuition and trust your intuition when it comes to this outside energy, but it's difficult for you to do so. Um, it's just like a very, it's like an energy of just being just very confused is what I'm seeing. But it's interesting because for some of you, even though you are confused, 
it's like you are seeing it as, okay, the fact that I'm confused, it lets me know that I need to withdraw my energy. And I would agree with that. Um, and if you aren't taking that approach, that may be the advice for you to take. Because when you're really, really confused about something, it doesn't mean you have to just jump to the worst case scenario and like cut the situation off. But when you're confused about something, that means there's an imbalance somewhere. It could be an imbalance within that person, meaning that like maybe they've shown you things that make you um, kind of weary of them. Like you, you don't know if you can trust them so it, there's the confusion there or it could be that um they are a trustworthy person but maybe you are still tr um, struggling with trust issues from your past but either way there's still like an imbalance and it'll be difficult to kind of maintain a relationship or a connection under those circumstances and again with outside energy it doesn't just have to be love it doesn't even have to be a person this could be a career that maybe you want to go for but it's not very stable or um it's like it's not a guaranteed position in this career so you're trying to figure out you know is it worth um, kind of going for it and taking the risk so just take it as it resonates with it can be different things um, so some of you are like I said are kind of withdrawing your energy you don't want to continue to feed this situation until you know you're more balanced and you're able to see things more clearly with the sudden wealth card being here as well um, this lets me know that there is definitely some type of luck or abundance that's coming to you and you could be focusing on that um, in order to distract yourself from whatever this outside energy is. So for example, um, let's say that this is a romantic partner that you can't figure out or like you're just very misguided about them. Um, you could be focusing on work in order to withdraw your energy from that person because you're just very confused, which sometimes, like I said, that could be, you know, the best solution. Sometimes t when talking it out or trying to communicate doesn't work, there's a need to sometimes retreat a little bit, you know, doesn't mean you have to cut them off or ghost or act like you don't care. But um, sometimes it's best to, re to retreat a little bit and focus on other areas of life until you have, you know, the clarity that you need. So on their end, we have the postponement card. And um, that lets me know that this person, is definitely I'm hearing that they're focused on something oh okay what I'm hearing is that this person their life feels very bleak sort of hollow and they are hoping to find something that will kind of brighten their life is what I'm hearing hmm I need to clarify that. They're searching for something that could brighten their life. For some of you, if this is a person that you're separated from, it could very well be that they're thinking of the connection that you had with them because that was a source of happiness for them. And now that you're gone, they feel kind of drained. Um, but that's for, I think that's for a small group of you. I'm going to pull one more. pathway yet yeah, this person or this situation is blocked this could be like a um, a grass is the grass greener on the other side type of thing so this could be like someone who is taking you for granted or who did take you for granted in the past and now they're kind of stuck or blocked because of the fact that they took you for granted or because they didn't appreciate what they had um but they're definitely like they're, they're just it's a very depressed drained sort of energy is what i'm feeling very like bleak like just a gray cloud is what I'm, I'm seeing and their path is blocked i think they could be regretting making some decision and now they're waiting for things to turn around and they see and they feel like their path is just blocked with the courthouse card being here and the thief card being here this person feels like something was stolen from them this is confusing energy what the hell is going on here um this person feels like something was stolen from them that some decision that they that was made robbed them of something that made them very happy. And it's funny or interesting because they could have been the ones to make this decision, but they still feel like it was taken, like this, the, whatever it was that made them happy, most likely their connection with you, they feel like it was taken from them. 
is what I'm seeing. And I think this especially goes for those of you who have turned your attention elsewhere. Um, they feel like it was taken from them. Yeah, but it, it doesn't have to be that they feel like it was physically taken, meaning that it doesn't have to be that they feel like someone came in and snatched you from them. It could be like they feel robbed because maybe they just couldn't get their shit together or they, they didn't see the value and the connection for what it was and now they kind of feel robbed by themselves like they cheated themselves out of a good opportunity um with the courthouse card being here i read that as like the final decisions card like decisions being set in stone and so yeah it, some type of definite decision was made here but it's like the uh, this person is hoping for a turnaround even though the decision is kind of final but yeah they just feel extremely blocked is what I'm seeing. All right, we're gonna continue this. Um, we're gonna continue this over on my Vimeo channel. So I'll leave the link to that down below. Um, I'll clarify all these cards and then we will look at your do's and don'ts for the upcoming month. So thank you for watching and I will see you guys over on my Vimeo channel.